Hello, my name is Stacy. And I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Well, anyway, if I'm to be totally honest, I guess I knew a long time ago that I needed to come into these rooms. But, you know, I didn't really have a boss who would let me get out of his sight. Some of the other girls did, you know, some of the freelancers. <laughs> Few of them went to the went to the rooms. They never came back to the street. They did quite well. The ones that did come back to the street, they're mostly all dead. I can't understand why I'm not dead. I don't know what I'm still doing here. Huh. Old hustler like me. 39, pushing 60. Oh my God. I can't believe I'm still alive, really. I've seen so much death and violence and people overdosing. And Horrible things, really. It's been an ugly ride. But I know that I met Bob through Pastor Pete a few weeks ago. I haven't had a drink since. It's been a few weeks, and I tell you, it was rough. I didn't use her drink. I was bouncing like a ball. I was pretty much a nervous wreck. But I have to say that when I'm in here for the first time, it's been, it's been lovely. The honesty, oh my god, you people. You really tell it like it is. <laughs> I just feel safe. But maybe the first time in my life I feel like I'm in a safe place. Well, anyway, thanks for letting me share. Hey, Bob. Must be really weird seeing me here, man. I know that if it wasn't for me, you still have your trucking company. Hell, we still have our trucking company. I screwed up, man. I screwed up a lot. And one screw up after another. Anyway, I don't know what to say to you, man. You know? I really don't know what to say, Bob. Look, Dallas, that's all water under the bridge, see? But I, I, I gotta be honest with you. When I had to go find your truck and get them groceries to market two days late, I was pretty pissed. And that's the truth. But that's not important now. You're here. That's what's important, that you're here. So just keep coming back. You understand me? Just keep coming back now. All right. Come on, Stacy. We gotta get going now. Come on, let's go. Oh, Bob, they want me to keep coming back, Bob. Huh? Okay, Bob, let's go. Let's go, Bob. Oh, Bob, that was a good time, Bob. That was way better than I thought it was gonna be, Bob. Oh, I met such good ladies there, Bob. They all gave me their numbers, and they all told me to call them, and they all offered to take me to more meetings, Bob. Yeah, I hear you, Stacy. I wanna start going a lot more myself. I forgot how good it is. Gosh, I felt good in there. Heck, I even forgave Dallas, you know that? I just felt so good to be back in there. That's a godly room, I tell you. They want me to keep coming back, Bob. Huh? Let's see what's on the boot tube. Hello, I'm Floyd Flanagan with a breaking news story. This afternoon in the South Bridge area, a shootout took place between Calgary SWAT and a notorious criminal Carmine Noah Rodriguez, also known on the streets as Paco. This footage, just sent in from a passerby, shows the shootout, explosion, fire, and subsequent death of the notorious criminal. Stay tuned, we'll have more as information continues to pour in on this amazing story. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Look at that. That's one crispy meat Paco right there. <laughs> oh, they finally got that son of a bitch. Oh, sorry. You can't tell me that you actually care whether or not that guy is alive or dead. I don't know what I feel, Bob. I mean, part of me is relieved. 
And part of me is just so sad. Paco never had a, a shot at a real life Bob. Kind of like me. You know, Paco was raised in a, in a crime family. He didn't know what normal was. But you're free, Stacy. For the first time in your life, you're free. You can do anything you want. The sky's the limit for you now, Stacy. That's true. I mean, I did go to a meeting. And they did ask me to keep coming back. And I did meet a lot of lovely ladies there. Oh, you're right, Bob. This is a new beginning. It's the first time in my life I've had a real chance at a normal life. I mean, go for it, Bob. <laughs> oh, I hope I can make it. Uncle Carmine. You want me to round up Stacy and uh, Smokey? Nick, once you cut the head off of the snake, the body can no longer hurt you. Huh? Remember that. Paco will be bigger in death than he was in life. He will be a legend. All the kids back home in Greece in the family are going to look up to him now even more. Think about it. He went out in a blaze of glory and he took four pigs with him. He'll be remembered for decades to come. He'll be a hero in the family. He will get many other youngsters involved in our business. I remember way back when he was a little boy in Greece, eh? before I even had an opportunity to teach him anything. Already, five, six years old, he was already going to school and mugging the other kids for their lunch money. Ah, he had such potential. He could have been a great leader. He could have had senators, congressmen, all in his pocket. But remember one thing, Nick, as you Climb the family ladder yourself. Paco never learned how to fly under the radar, doing things quietly, keeping it to himself. Huh? Only people see the results of your work. They never see you at work. That's where Paco failed. And that was his undoing. But we don't speak ill of the dead. No. We send him home in style. Huh? Nick. I want you to send the family some flowers. Eh? I'm going to arrange the funeral. It's going to be a huge celebration of Baco's great life. We are going to send him home in style. There'll be many friends and family there. What a festivity it's going to be. Okay, go on, Nick. You take care of that, and I'll make some phone calls. Okay, uh, I'll call the florist right away. Um. Uncle Carmen. Have mercy, Stacy. I tell you, this lawyer, what's his name? Poorish Rama Rama Ding Dong or whatever his name is. He must be loaded. He must have brought a whole bunch of money in here from the from the Middle East or something. Look at this place like a palace. Lord have mercy. Looky over there. He's got a gold dang fish aquarium built right into the wall over there. I used to have fish. You know you can pet fish. Did you know that, Stacy? Watch this. I'm going to go, go over there and look at them fish. Look at them babies. Oh, they're beautiful. I remember having some of those. Look at that one. Look at that one there. Hey, hi, little buddy. How are you? Hey. Oh. oh, he's a killer. Oh, dang, he's got some teeth on him. Oh, good. Eat him off me. Get help. Oh, my God, Bob. Are you okay? Here, quick. Come right in here. Uh-oh. Hello, Miss Stacy. Please come with me. Come with me, please. Nice to meet you. Come along. Come, come, come. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Please, Miss Stacy. Please sit, sit, sit. Okay. Miss Stacy, my name is Parush Raji. Knock, knock. Patta. <laughs> okay, but you can just call me Homie P. Everybody does. It's much easier that way. <laughs> oh, homie P. <laughs> That's funny. Let's continue. All right, so 
you didn't know your father, did you, Stacy? No, I never did. I saw a picture of a man on a horse when I was a little girl, and, and I thought that was him. And my mother said it wasn't, and she threw the picture away. Your parents were not married, but still your father wanted to get custody of you. Your father tried in court and fought for you, but in those days, not being married, the man would not get the custody. Your mother had many religious people stand up for her, and they described your father as an abusive drunkard. He did have a record for fighting, Miss Stacy, and he did drink. But I can see by the amount that he has left you in his will, he loved you very much. His will? Yes, your father's name was William Robert Tanaki, and he was shot to death most recently. Bill was my daddy? Bill? Oh. No passing out now. Please stay with us. Here, Miss Stacy, please have some water. Have some water. Oh, thank you, Homie P. You're all right? Yes, I'm okay. Thank you. I think I'm okay. You are the sole heir of Mr. Bill's estate. You also have a half brother. I believe you know him. His name is Smokey, and he is your brother from another mother. But your father makes no mention of him in the will, and I'm not sure if he knew about him. But his mother did provide a DNA test, and it is clear that Mr. Bill was also his father. Oh my God, Smokey's my half-brother? This will is not being contested. Mr. Smokey's mother is leaving the decision as to whether you will share any of the proceeds. Totally up to you. All your father's assets have been liquidated as per his instructions. And now I will be contacting you in the next few days as to how you wish to receive your full inheritance of $1.5 million. Oh, I almost went again. Oh my God, I'm a mess. I'm a hot mess. Please stay close to your phone for the next 24 to 48 hours because in that time, all the money in the estate will be released to you. Okay. Thank you and have a very nice day. Yeah, and Bill was my dad. And he, he tried to win me in court. And these, these crazy religious people convinced the judge that he was a drunk and a loser. And, and then that's why I was raised by my mother. And he never knew where I was. And he's been looking for me my whole life. And he was right across the street. And I watched him get shot. And I didn't even know it was him. Oh my God, can you believe this? It's insane. You're that little girl? That little girl that Bill was fighting for? You? I was there. I was there on the courthouse steps when Bill fought for you. I was there when them people showed up. I didn't know that was you. Your daddy loved you so much. I remember him coming down them courthouse steps. I remember your mother holding you. You were in her arms and you were reaching over her shoulder while she was getting in the car. And you were screaming your little brain. You were saying, Daddy, Daddy. Your dad. It's the first time I ever seen him break down like that. He sat down on them courthouse steps. He took his hat off. He put it in his lap and he just put his face into that hat. He just cried and cried. Oh my God, I can't believe this. I cannot believe it. You. All that time. You were right here. Right in front of us. 
nobody knew. Stacy girl, from now on you call me Uncle Bob. Oh, Bob, what a story. Who'd believe it? We must have come into each other's lives for a reason. Yeah, and Smokey, Smokey, this native lady got, Bill got her pregnant. That's how I had my half-brother Smokey. And what about, what about MJ? MJ was my half-brother from another mother. Oh my God. Talk about a small world. And Smokey's Bill's boy too. Lord have mercy. Well, you know, Bill always was kind of a teepee creeper. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Okay, Uncle Bob. We gotta go find Smokey. I got his address on my phone. Oh my God. Bob, my purse smells like fish. Oh, okay, I got it. Let's go find Smokey.